So now comes the question, when does the first law work? Well, the first law works when the frame of reference is what we call an inertial frame of reference. And an inertial frame of reference would then be a frame in which there are no accelerations of any kind. Is that possible? Is 26100, is this lecture hall, an inertial reference frame? For one, the Earth rotates about its own axis and 26100 goes with it. That gives you a centripetal acceleration. Number two, the Earth goes around the Sun. That gives it in a centripetal acceleration, including the Earth, including you, including 26100. The Sun goes around the Milky Way, and you can go on and on. 26100 is not an inertial reference frame. We can try to make an estimate on how large these accelerations are that we experience here in 26100. And let's start with the one that is due to the Earth rotation. So here's the Earth rotating with angular velocity omega, and here is the equator, and the Earth had a certain radius. Radius of the Earth. This is the symbol for Earth. Now, I know that 26100 is here, but let's just take the worst case that you're on the equator. You're there. You go around like this, and in order to do that, you need a centripetal acceleration, AC, which, as we have seen last time, equals omega square r. How large is that one? Well, the period of rotation for the Earth is 24 hours times 3600 seconds. So omega equals 2 pi divided by 24 times 3600, and that would then be in radians per second. And so you can calculate now what omega square r Earth is if you know that the radius of the Earth is about 6,400 kilometers. Make sure you convert this to meters, of course. And you will find then that the centripetal acceleration at the equator, which is the worst case, it's less here, is 0.034 meters per second squared. And this is way, way less. This is 300 times smaller than the gravitational acceleration that you experience here on Earth.